not always functioning. Do you know what I get on the 100 um, quiz? I only got 52. Dude, I got 70. <laughs> so, I was surprised I even got 70. I'm like, I, uh, I when it comes to tests and quizzes, I, mm -mm, I am terrible at them. My brain just goes. I can study as much as 30 minutes an hour and I still will get to that point. I'm like, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Your grade is higher than me because I only have B52. So right now my grade against, again is in D. I, I said, all right, all right. So let me, let me, so I am counting of the week. So fifth, so I have to be good in this week five, week six until on the week 12. So I will have a B, B grade. As long as it's B, it's all right. Or C, or the, the passing yeah. is, it's all right. <laughs> that's me. I'm like, as long as I'm passing the class, that's okay. I'm like, I cannot push myself to be in, at an A. It's too stressful. So I'm like, if I pass the class, okay, we're good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, same, <laughs> same. Unlike my friends, they are always hating. They said that they're always aiming for the A's. I said, really? Like, you are really going to push there? They said, there's no gain when there's no pain. I said, all right. All right. You, you do I, your. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for me, I feel like if I'm striving for an A, I'm missing out on things. Hmm. So I, gosh, I don't know how many semesters ago it was that I decided I was not going to push myself to do that because I felt like I wasn't learning anything that I was so focused on the grade that I was missing out on things. And when I started just doing my best studying as hard as I could, I learned more. So it's weird, but you know, whatever. Oh, which which is which is um a, a very good uh principle, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have to do we have to have three case studies. Even oh, though there's even though there's only two of us, we have to have three, which I got really frustrated about because I'm like, oh, that's so frustratingly hard. Yeah. But did, did, did they they message you? They yeah, because I I I mess I commented and I said, well, there's only two of us. I'm like, do we have to have three? And they're like, yes. I was like, okay. All right. So for this week, I just decided to go ahead and do two, just so. Yeah. All right. So um, you do two, and then maybe on the other week, I will do two. Yeah, just kind of alternating and stuff like that. Because if we don't have three, it docks us two points. I'm like, okay. Oh. Fine. <laughs> so I got to kind of set up like really quickly tonight so hopefully i'm i'm so glad that that the meeting um link was already in the my my zoom account so that i said oh i can i can easily uh, find a um, step because i really cannot open i tried and i tried to you know i tried to use the the incognito one but still like it's it's hard so i said i'm, I'm so glad that the the that yeah it was safe yeah the meeting is already safe <laughs> yes so all right so I've got it all recording so I will start off with my first one and then we can do yours and then I will finish up with my second one so all right when you're ready let me know oh yes please okay so this is the first one it said um blah, 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 blah. Try speaking again, brain. A 10 year old child is brought into the clinic after eating breakfast with his family. There is an eruption of pale, raised wheels, and the areas where the lesions are at is extremely itchy, causing the child to want to itch the irritated skin. Mm -hmm. Parents said he isn't on any medications, but the inflammation appeared after he had consumed eggs, which he has never eaten before. Oh, allergy, huh? So based on that description, yeah, what do you think the disease would be? So first that came into my mind is hives. Huh? Wow. <laughs> yep. Or or as the the technical name is your your dicaria, I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah, I cannot pronounce it correctly. I'm like <laughs> so I'm like I, hives. I <laughs> so I go on the other one. I, I go on the uh, more because you see I'm also having a hard time pronouncing the you yeah know, the diseases it is hard <laughs> I'm like why can't you make it easy so based on that description of that how the child came in 
what would be the diagnosis that you would need? How would you find out that it was hives? Mm. Like what diagnostic procedures would you do? All right. I think I, I wrote it here. Wait. <laughs> I will go to my notes. <laughs> like, hold on, let me look. Yeah. So if we are having this um hives, so we should um of course go to the medical history. And then we have to go the sensation I want sen 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 sensitization testing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, diagnosed, you know, we need to determine medical history such as foods ingested, environmental factors. Oh, you know, yeah. has this happened before? Is this the first time, you know, that this has happened? So there are, you know, after we find out that there are others in his family who have the same allergy. So we've, you know, determined, okay, so it's hives from eating and it's something he shouldn't be eating. <laughs> Thank you for, for that additional. Like we, for example, we are doing the diagnostics, right? And you just um, speak of uh, about the food that they eat. So I have to consider that because mm -hmm. that one came out from, I mean, removed from my mind so yeah thank you thank you for um adding that one yeah typically typically it's the most common thing according to what was in the reading it, it was the most common reason for highs mm -hmm. but also it could be bug bites and stuff like that or other things but typically it's the food sometimes that they considered as the most common I was like oh yeah that kind of makes and, and this is a 10 years old right and yep, this 10 is years old. Yeah, 10 years old so you know, hasn't had eggs before, you know, for whatever reason until today. So, you know, sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze for a second there, but yeah, so he's a young kid, but just haven't, hasn't had eggs before until today. And, you know, his parents maybe, you know, didn't think at the time, oh, maybe you shouldn't be having that because, you know, they forgot about the egg allergy or whatever the case is. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that's the kind of diagnosis is just, you know, doing the medical history, the sensitivity tests and stuff like that. So based yeah. on that, knowing what the disease is and getting that diagnosis, what do you think would be the treatment plan for it? What would be the best option for the kid? Yeah, of course, because it's an allergy that costs, um, that is caused by the food that he eat. So we have to give him an antihistamines yeah, to stop, to stop the allergy. And we could um also give him the epinephrine, ep epinephrine, and also hydrocortisone creams and lotion to mm -hmm. soothe, yeah, yep. to soothe the redness or the itchy thing on 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 that one. Oh yeah, and you know epinephrine or you know epipens, you know, are something. Well, that those you... are the. Yep. The... Yeah. No. Right. Those are things that you <laughs> want. The movie. Yeah, those are things that you really want to have on hand, especially if it's a severe allergy, like to peanuts. You know, peanuts is one of the most common oh, yeah, that people yeah, hear right. about. Right, and and there are all some of the people that having um uh, that kind of allergy, especially in the food, they really have um a severe allergy attack, and and sometimes it causes them not to breathe because yep. the allergy is kicking it on the inside. So that yeah. is hard. I, I hope we have that EpiPens too. Yeah, Epi they're, they're lifesavers. I mean, you you would administer the EpiPen, but you still want to get them to a hospital if it's that severe because you yeah. don't know what damage is going on on the inside. So if you've given them the epinephrine pen or, the, you know, the EpiPen as it's shortened to be and they still can't breathe, I mean, obviously you need to get them to a hospital. Yeah, epinephrine. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I just called it EpiPen because I'm like, is he like trying to yeah, pronounce right. epinephrine? Yeah. I'm like, epinephrine. <laughs> me too, me too. And I also watched that uh, on the movie, like like those epipens, they are really good. I mean, yeah. yeah. While uh, what do you call that one? The the, the when the nine one one or the medical staff went, yeah, and then they they are um assisting the patient with an what with that um epipen, yeah. and then they're still yeah um uh, bringing the 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 patient to the hospital. Yeah, it's even though they are already um given um that that treatment yeah that's crazy well yeah so i i did 
I did that one as the easy one, the first one, because I'm like, yeah, would be kind of easy to understand. So I'm like, okay, we're starting off easy. <laughs> yeah. Is that what, what does it mean, the anaphylactic reaction? Anaphylactic shock. Um, yeah. It's, oh, I'm trying to remember. My mind is some blank. Basically, the, it's a shock to your system when you have an allergic reaction. Like, like, like you cannot you breathe. can't breathe your oh, okay. your you know your lips and your tongue become numb all you right know, they're, I see. I yeah yeah thank thank you thank you yeah thank no you. you're good i was trying to remember i was like my mind went blank i was like uh yeah <laughs> an anaphylactic reaction so that is the reaction where where you cannot breathe due, due to the allergy reaction is it coming in inside of you you know, like when your face is is um turning red, and and you're you're swollen and you can't yes, breathe and yeah, you're right. numb. Yeah. All right. Anaphylactic reaction, or what do you call that one again? Anaphylactic what? Yeah, anaphylactic shock is what happens. All right, anaphylactic shocks. All right, let me let me um take note of that. So that when, for example, it goes to the quiz. All right, so hives, and then because sometimes they, these are the keywords, you know. Yeah, I, I should have focused on the keywords the, rather than on the long, long, long one that I got. I got um, I my, my brain mess up. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Mine does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you want us to do your oh do you have any more questions or do you want us to move on your second um um case or do you want me to go first and then you you, you do the presentation again? Yeah, you can go next because we 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 hit every nail on that one. We got all of the stuff, so nice. I'm ready for yours. Right. So this is this is what I found on the on the book too and where is that one <gasps> okay so uh a 23 year old female patient said that she has a several thick scaly well-defined it it i right team right uh, what, how it right to matters flags silver in color and they cover her elbows thighs and about 15 percent of the body surface area total that that kind of um scaly um redness you know and they are silver in color oh 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 i think i figured I, oh oh Ah, that was right. Is it psoriasis? <laughs> yeah, you hit it well. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, silver. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I did control F to look through my notes because I'm like, I don't want to try and scroll through all of it. I'm like, let me just do control F and type in silver. And I'm like, yep, that's right. It was psoriasis. Whoo. Thank goodness. Same with me. When when psoriasis, I'll also uh, take note of the word because sometimes psoriasis and the eczema like it yeah. it yeah uh say it is the same but when when i see the silver yeah that's right, how my brain I, I told you you're totally good like you are hitting it like just all new ones <laughs> <laughs> that the only reason why i remember i because i was like silver and i'm like i was like i know what it is when it's um eczema but i'm like psoriasis is different because it has that silvery scaling to it so i was like ah, ah. I remember. So now I've got my notes pulled up for a psoriasis. So let's go down here. All right. So what what do you think are the diagnostic um, procedures on on this um sickness? So based on what I remember, it was obviously observation of the skin because it's going to be visual, especially if it's got that silvery scaling. Yeah. you know to it but also a careful medical history like anything i think medical history is going to be big on diagnosing but also it does mention that a skin biopsy 
could suggest the diagnosis, although it may also be of little value. I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, yeah, you could do a biopsy, but then maybe it wouldn't be little worth- value. Yeah. Like you, you made for the biopsy. <laughs> yeah, it's like wouldn't be worth doing it. Like, I mean, skin biopsies for other diseases would make a lot of sense, but for psoriasis, I'm like, well, I kind of get why they're saying it wouldn't really matter as much because you'd be able to tell right away what it is. I mean, it is a visual. Yeah, thing. right. And you gotta always always gotta check the medical history and family medical history too. I feel like it's crazy. I know I have to because I have eczema so I'm like I'm like I always know what the difference is between the two between psoriasis and eczema so I was like ha 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 but it's crazy how very similar they are oh yeah yeah Um, is it uh, also um, itchy like psoriasis Mm -hmm. and eczema are, are both itchy too isn't it oh yeah so for me um what do you do to stop? Because if you keep on scratching that, then you will have yep. a, a lesions or a wound. Yeah. Yeah. It, so a lot of it is you've got to, a lot of it for me is I have to find what is causing it. If it's mm-hmm. an irritant or if it's, you know, stress, a lot of that. Um. So for me, during the winter times, mm-hmm. it kind of pops up. It, it's mild, very mild in the winter. It kind of pops up and is a little annoying, but not as bad but there are um detergents for washing clothes and stuff that oh, I can't yeah. use because it irritates one. it so we we got a new washer and dryer I don't know how many months ago because our previous ones were just not functioning anymore and so it requires liquid detergent and at yeah. the time my, we couldn't find the detergent that was like the it was free it's like free of the chemicals that irritate my skin and I had completely forgotten about it because I hadn't had a bad reaction of or big uh, flare up of the eczema and all of a sudden I'm starting to notice the irritation right here on me and it's red and it's irritating and, and I'm like what the heck and then I'm like oh it's my eczema and I'm like what is it? I'm like it's not even winter time yet and I'm like it's the detergent because it wasn't oh, a specific yeah. type of detergent. So my mom's like, she's like, yeah. well, let's right away. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm like, it's not bad. It just kind of flared up and I forgot about it because I hadn't had a flare up of it in so long that I kind of forgot I even had it. So yeah, it's, it can be annoying sometimes. I think psoriasis is, is worse though than yeah, it, right. you know, I think it has more yeah. uh, issues that come with it where I mean, and when I when I am looking at the picture, um, the different thing about psoriasis, psoriasis and eczema with psoriasis, we can see those like a uh, skibby the the silver one. It's yeah. like a, yeah. So yeah, and, and it's also interesting that there, you know, when doing the reading, it said that there are five different types of psoriasis, and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> but there was only one. I did it. Not I did five. it. Five. Oh, when I said. Whoo! Really, there are five. Yeah, so there's the plaque psoriasis. Yeah. The gut 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 I can't say that one. The inverse psoriasis, the pustular psoriasis, and the endodermic psoriasis. I was like, geez. Yeah. I was so, like, yeah, so I think that's a little bit worse off than eczema. Of, yeah, on the different part of the body, like they they address that differently, isn't yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, with me, I mean, where I mainly will get the irritation is I will oh, have so your, right... your your skin is looking uh, good now yeah. because of course you are watching the detergent detergent yeah. that you are using. you are so good to find what is causing your your eczema to um um triggered right yeah it it, it kind of was like a combination of me and my mom both realizing that it was the detergent that was causing the issue because I'm like it's not winter yet I'm like why am I having such a bad reaction I was like oh because it just kind of had a moment of like clicking in my head but I mean normally when I get it it'll be right here in this area it'll be on my hand going up and sometimes it'll be on the inside of my elbow a little bit, but not as much. But yeah, it's 
it's crazy yeah. sometimes i'm like what but oh thanks body i'm like i'm already having so many other problems and we add this into the mix i'm like i'm just a ball of chaotic mess of diseases going on oh no you're not all right and then one more thing that is um um with with, with people with eczema it doesn't i mean it, it doesn't transfer is that, that correct like yeah it's like, not yeah it is not it is not what do you call that one transmitting no yeah it is not um infectious uh, yeah right it is I'm like infectious. it'll come to me the word will come <laughs> <laughs> it is not infectious because you see my my um my grandson he also have that one yeah yeah so it's... um i don't know what because when when he was born and then when he was um like he he, he is uh, turning to on on november and then my my daughter said to me that he is uh, he got eczema and and the doctor proves it that is an eczema. So I said, uh, is it a genetic one or but 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 my daughter don't have it and I also don't have it and I I don't know why where did my grandson um uh, ha have that on? So yes, like sometimes he got it. So it it is so itchy. Sometimes it scratches it, and then yeah. sometimes one with with the help of the ointment it's okay and then it, it will be gone and then another time again it will be there again so i think uh, aside from the detergent that's that's the some of the foods um causing it to or yeah. or chewing it it could be a combination of things it's you know and that's why their you know diagnostic procedures are set up so the doctors can figure out okay is it food is it history is it yeah. something is it something the child is coming in contact with that's causing the irritation? So, yeah, it's it's interesting. And, you know, looking at the kind of the diagnostic procedures for even psoriasis, it's kind of, you know, you know, a little bit similar, you know, observation of the skin, medical history, you know, stuff like that. So it's interesting that they're similar, but they're very different at the same time. So it's I always thought it was interesting. I was like, oh. Because now I understand better what the, I knew they were different, but I didn't know exactly how different. Now I have a better understanding of the two. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. and then if we, if we talk about the treatment for psoriasis, like, there was a lot that was listed. Like I made notations of like everything because <laughs> I was, because unfortunately, you know, it, it, it did say directly in the reading that there is no cure for the disease and that the treatment is palliative which means it's only there to help ease the irritation yeah. you know yeah. it's not it's something that they're going to be stuck with um so according to what i had in the notes in the reading and, and I, what is that with the sorry sorry too we need to um because there's no known prevention for psoriasis but of course it says Wait, what is that kind? Oh, I think I am wrong because I I thought of the food of the omega three. Yeah, so, so that's complementary therapy that can help, um, kind of help with taking you know the treatment. So there is some complementary therapy that can help. Um, you know the the foods high in omega three fatty acids, oh, yeah. vitamin, so you know vitamin supplements, you know. But yeah. it's also saying, you know, you know, for the regular treatment that there's talking about, you know, the scales can be removed after they're softened with petroleum jelly. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, just thinking about that. I'm like, ow, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh. You mm -hmm. know, and then it talks about corticosteroid cream. Yeah. Antihistamines, you know, exposure to ultraviolet or ultraviolet a or ultraviolet b light mm. can help reduce the cells that reproduce that cause the the, the mm. disease and i'm like okay that kind of makes but, sense and then it know, does you know and then there's some medications that help but it's it's a little bit harder to manage psoriasis is i feel like I mean, that makes me feel bad for people who have it because you have to try and find something that's going to work for you or I feel like ex eczema is a little bit more easier to manage. I mean, there are so many creams that are out there. There are injections that you can do. For eczema, right. There yeah. are, 
um I think there's a pill version now that they finally have which I'm like because I'm not a person that wants to do injections and I'm like I'm a person that forgets to do creams I'm like if it's a pill form that's easy take it with the rest of the pills I'm on <laughs> but with psoriasis it's like you have to you have all of these things and it just it kind of is like a band-aid it just kind of soothes it it doesn't really like cause the inflammation to decrease a lot it's kind of more of just like here we'll help you with it but it's something that you're kind of stuck with and it's not you know fun to deal with mm -hmm. so it's crazy I'm like all right so yeah well, I'm, I'm learning a lot I, I am learning a lot from you <laughs> <laughs> thank you I feel like I know a lot which yeah, is thank really you <laughs> thank you so much because you are helping me yeah it's crazy. But of course, if if this if these questions will really arise, I mean, what what we are discussing. So when for for the diseases that are in the quiz and we have discussed about that, then I am really confident that I can answer that. But but so <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. And then I'm like I'm like I forget like I will get to the quiz and I'm like uh I remember some things but not everything. <laughs> so yeah, me too. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, so that was good. That was, I think we did good on that. So are we good to move on to oh, the yes, last yes. one? Yes. Okay, sweet. I'm going to scroll down a little bit because, all right. So a mother brings her one-year-old uh, into the clinic and right away we notice the pigment of the child's skin. There are mm -hmm. white spots or patches on the baby's face, arms, feet and hands but the patterns aren't specific and appear symmetrically so while we we're examining the baby we notice that there is some discoloration on the eyebrows and the hair that is on the scalp that almost appears gray in color and the mother mentions that there are others on her family side that have the same disease so what do we think it is so I think it's um the, the this is called uh vitiligo. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the model have that one too. And I have a friend um having that. Yeah, it's such a in yeah, like I knew a little bit of it before reading, but like I now understand the the disease a whole lot better. I'm like, dang. I was like, I didn't I, know I what people that one before when I am not when I'm not studying this one, we call that one vertiligo too. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? It's so crazy. I'm like, vertigo is is when you are having a headache. So, right? Oh, this the, the skin. This is is vertigo, not vertigo. Yeah. You know, and I didn't, I didn't even know about this disease until oh, I forgot her name. That one model whose name I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. There's and I'm like, happening. and she's like, ex she's like accepted it as who she is. She's not, yeah. you know. Because there are things you could do, but so we've got that it's the, 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 the I'm gonna say it wrong again. I just had it. But I go there. We go. <laughs> I, so I, how? I so how would this be diagnosed then? If we determine based on that, how would did we come to that determination that it was vitiligo? All right. So of course it is um visual, right? You can you can rightly um see that. Yep. Yeah, like there is the skin patches. So yeah, so it is included in the physical examination. And again, medical history, if there's a medical history of the sunburn yep. and premature graying. Now, I, I really cannot understand this. What What is the meaning of premature um, graying? So and basically what happens is that like this, for people who have it, like there are like there, if, you know they'll have eyebrows they'll have their normal hair color and then sometimes they'll be just a grayish little spot or if they're a male and they have a beard it'll yeah. have all the same color but then there'll be patches of like oh yeah grayish. because so, it's, they're not at the point and they're not at the age of having the gray hair yet but because there's deep pigment deep oh, so that is, it that causes is the, it to not have the right pigmentation for those hair. areas and, yeah it even happens with the eyelashes too where it, they're white they're grayish white yeah and not that's why my friend have it and her you know the the hair on her yep. face i'm mean, here yeah it, it turned it is turning gray yeah it's it yeah. you know it's the craziest thing 
Yeah. Yeah. So it is very, you know, you'll do, you're right that it is very visual. So you'll do the, the physical examination. You're right about the family history. I mean, it, you know, mother yeah, family, family yeah. has it. So then obviously that would make sense. But also you find out that there is hypothyroidism, which is an autoimmune disease, which can kind of lead to oh. vitilo, 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 vitilo. So if you have that kind of disease too, you are also, um, there it, are, it is possible, yeah. Yeah, there are certain types. It does, it said in the reading that there are certain types of autoimmune disease that cause yeah. it to uh -huh. appear. And hyperthyroidism is one of those. So uh -huh. with it being such a young child, you know, we want to be very careful the, the diagnostic procedure. So we want to, you know, do blood tests just to determine what the thyroid function is. If the child has the autoimmune disease on top of having the genetic factor. So it's kind of just being very careful with the child, even though you're wanting to find out, you don't want to poke and prod too much. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So if we just, if we've determined it with the diagnose, diagnostic procedures and everything like that. What do you think would be the treatment plan? Right. So according to here, the treatments are, of course, um, topical corticosteroids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we also need an ultraviolet A therapy. And it, they said uh, micropigmentation or tattooing. But yeah. It, it is, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. for example, you wanted to cover it with tattoo. Yeah. And it's right. Yeah. So I, 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 I just thought when... I, I thought it's not part of the treatment. Like if, if you have that bit and you want to make a tattoo or maybe you have a scar and you wanted to have a tattoo in that, I really don't think that it's a treatment. But because of the of of this um yeah, yeah we have I said, Oh, yeah, all right. So doing a tattoo is especially if you have the vitili vitiligo. Mm -hmm. Vitiligo. Yeah, vitiligo. It makes sense. Yeah. It's part of the treatment. Yeah. So yeah. I said, Oh wow. So for being such a small baby, you know, you don't want to do the major. Oh, yes, of course, major, for your babies. Things, <laughs> major things, yeah. But I mean, that's something that the mother could consider in the future. But right now, the easiest thing for treating the for treating it while the child is so young is doing the corticosteroids yeah. um, and just kind of monitor it to see how that helps. Um, when the child gets older, they can look at doing the ultralight therapy, All right, even so though the side effects can be pretty severe, but that's something that the mother can discuss with the child when they're older. Um, so we can, I mean, sorry for stopping you in there. No, you're so good. We have, to, we have to consider the age too before yeah, doing you Always. I think for me, I think that it would make the most sense that you always want to consider the age of the, of the patient to determine what the best treatment plan is because you don't want to be tattooing a baby. Obviously. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> it wouldn't be good. And you don't want to do too much poking and prodding and you don't want to you know i think with them being so young you wouldn't want to do the ultralight yeah. therapy because the side effects of that can be pretty pretty harsh on a child so yeah, the right. corticor steroids you know monitoring it um there also is the monobenzone that can be applied if it's like 50 percent of more of the child is got the depigmentization so is it an ointment yeah, it's kind of like a cream kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's oh. a little bit different than the other other creams. But I mean, it, for this one, it's kind of, I know, I mean, we have, we would have a treatment plan. But I mean, it's ultimately as well what the mother and child agree would be best in the long run. So when the child gets older, do they feel comfortable with the the diggy pig my depigmentization or do they have this the self-conscious of like I don't like this I don't feel comfortable I want to you know like the model whose name I can't remember right now I yeah, mean yeah, she's yeah. fully embraced hmm. her vitiligo I mean she may use the creams to kind of you know she might take things to kind of ease anything you know any pain that might come or whatever it is but I mean some of the people who have it just accept it fully and be like no this is who I am this is how God made me I will just accept it so I think you would have a treatment plan set up in place but I think also need to take in consideration the age of the child and the mental health as to if that would work or not but that's yeah, just okay. me right thank you thank you for that of course we have to uh, consider who are we treating with 
because if it's a baby we 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 doesn't i mean we cannot tell them that oh a tattoo is a good treatment yeah. for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also um i have a question regarding with the uh, vitiligo mm -hmm. i mean is it really growing up i mean growing up or i mean is it um what do you call that one is it really widened or for example i have a small one does it really spread yeah that's the, the, the yeah the, it can the, i mean and it even discussed in the reading that there are it, there are patterns of it some uh -huh. if i can find let me do control nope i said control f computer there we go let me get my notes pulled back up so i can do this because Okay, there we go. So it does and it stops, isn't it? it? So let's see. I'm trying to remember. I'm going back into my reading. Yeah, so it, it has like three different pattern options of how it can appear. So focal pattern can be limited to one or a few areas. So like mm. they could have a patch here and like a patch mm. on their arm. Mm. Uh, segmented pattern affects only one side of the body. So it might be only the left side is affected. Yeah. The most common version of it is the generalized pattern where it's just kind of all over, but kind of symmetrical at the same time. Yeah, so right. it it can, I can't remember if it said if it does, let's see. Okay, there we go. I was trying to figure out what the prognosis was. I was like, where's my notes on that? So according to what the reading said, it is a chronic condition and prognosis of it can be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. uh, for less than one third of clients, the the dig depigmentation. De oh my gosh, why can't I say that word today? The depigmentation stops progressing and remains stable for a lifetime. While in others, it can yeah. continue to spread and grow. Yeah. It just yeah. depends on so many yeah. different factors that we just don't have the exact, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of a thing where the doctor would have to monitor it and be like, okay, is it continuing is it the same that it was the last visit so it's kind of like the doctor would have to watch and see how it is because yeah. some people it'll stop other mm -hmm. people it'll continue so yeah. that's why it gives so many options for treatment and it you know even mentions complementary therapy um mm -hmm. it mentions it was like ginkgo biloba mm, it's which, a mushroom the red mushroom the ginkgo biloba yeah, it says, you know, that it can help mm -hmm. and could prevent further damage. So, I mean, there is complementary therapy, but it all comes down to discussions between the doctor and the patient and everything that's going on. So, yeah. Woo, we did it. We did it. We knocked <laughs> them out. We got three in. Yay. You are so cute when you are doing that. That's my little, it, it's a little part of my ADHD, my little, little dances, little <laughs> movements. <laughs> so yeah, so then for next week, I'll do one and then yes. you can do two I'll and then we'll just kind of alternate and do that every week, just every other, you know, since. I hope I am, I am so good like you, like when you present the, the case, you're so good at it, really. And when, when you're also answering uh, the case that I'm presenting, you are really um good at it. Oh, well, thank you. I think you're pretty good too. I mean, oh, you. you've got the you've got the facts and everything, and you're good. We both are pretty fantastic at what we do. Yeah, but you have you have a lots of reading than me, really, because some of the some some of it I, for example, I I went to the uh to my laptop, so I I only have the uh, what. The, the PowerPoint presentation in there. Yeah. yeah. So I only, I only, uh, I only go to that. And if I, for example, I don't understand, then I will go to as as Wikipedia, as Google. But but you have a lots of reading in there. Yeah. And, and thank you. And I learned a lot from you today. So before you go to the treatment, first consider the age. Yep. I think that will. I think that's the case for anything that we learn and talk about in this class that any diagnosis whether it's a skin disease mental health you know cardio whatever it is i think always doctors need to consider the age of the, the patient because some treatments are not going to work on a on the on a baby 
some treatments may not work on somebody who's older in age. So it's always something that I think has to be factored in is the age of the patient. So I'm not considering that before, but I'm just only, okay, so this is the treatment, reading, reading, reading. I forgot about the the, the, the case that we are having. So I said, oh, okay. yeah. For example, we have the case. I really have to focus on the uh, on the case, not on the thing that I am reading or on yeah. the notes that I have. And I think that's, I think a lot of it is that's why it's set up this way. This teach one another setup is that, yes, we want to discuss the disease, you know, whatever we've learned about this week, you know, but we also want to kind of understand how doctors do the case study, yeah, you right. know, and I, it makes, it makes total sense to me. I mean, the amount of times that I've seen doctors and the questions that they ask and everything like that, I'm like, well, yeah, it makes sense. Cause you're trying to figure out what's wrong and you're factoring in all of the things, the age, the gender, family history, yeah, environment, that's biological. That's so it's crazy. <laughs> this is why I can never be a doctor. It's too much is required to be a doctor. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope. <laughs> Nope, no, no, no. This class is right. so after this, for example, you have you have uh, finished the certificate or the degree applied health. Um, what will you be applying? I mean, the position or or what what kind of job, uh, will you be? Yeah. So for me, my my degree is focused on business management. Mm -hmm. So this um this course is one of the courses that like I had to take like an elective course, like a science course. Oh to meet a requirement of the degree and I'm like okay well I've done these other ones and I'm like ooh, communicable yeah. and non-communicable diseases I'm like oh that sounds well, cool you are a business and management and I am I am an if, if I will continue so my my degree will be applied to health yeah so I t I'm 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 always willing to learn things that don't always fit into what the field of study is so like I've taken psychology I've taken natural oh, disaster yeah. cl uh, class and I took this one because I'm like ooh, I want to learn more about the body and the diseases and stuff so yeah so for me it would be business management so the ultimate goal is to either own or manage a mm -hmm. event planning business nice oh event like 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 the the when, when um birthdays um birthdays wedding wedding mm -hmm. yeah I I also like that one you know Oh, I yeah. dream of becoming an event coordinator too, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm the kind of person where I'm very, 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 very creative. And I, you know, I've known how I've wanted my wedding to, you know, my reception to be since I was little, 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 little girl. <laughs> but I, you know, I've been to so many receptions and everything like that. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, well, this is really cool. But then I would maybe do something different. I'm like, why don't I just... I'm like, okay, so my creative side is coming out. I'm like, oh, event planning would be fun. And I'm like, yeah. I could combine two things I'm really good at, the artsy stuff. Ooh, we we have a beautiful ground in there, you know? <laughs> like also, I also dream of, you know, like, for example, you have, we, so, somebody will ask, oh, do, do we have event coordinator for a wedding? You know, I also dream of that. Yeah, I think it's yeah. it's a fun, it's a fun but I think it'd also be a very, like, it's fun, but also at the same time, it's a very rewarding job because you're, whether it's a, res a wedding reception or if it's like a birthday or whatever the event is, I mean, you're giving somebody what they want. You're giving, fulfilling somebody's dream. And I'm like, yes, because I'm very much a people person. So, <laughs> yeah. But. And sometimes part, I mean, um, if I have, if I have my friends, all right. So they they call they call me to become the the host in their yeah. um uh ceremony wedding or maybe birthday yeah I said yeah it's alright please yeah <laughs> I'll be happy to yeah, yeah because from 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 that I am exercising one of the talent that is um given to me yeah you know because I I don't know that that it, that it is within me unless I you I have to try I tried. yeah I tried and then yeah so this year I have um two um it was already passed so that was january and then another one it, it's a wedding one and then awesome. another one is um a baptism that yeah. is so cool yeah, but for the babies because that, that is for the catholic rites yeah oh yeah so, that's yeah. awesome so though it's all right it's all right so yeah so uh, for, for this year i have to so it's all right at least i have two <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah. mean i when my sister got married 
Uh -huh. um, in 2015, uh, you know, I was kind of, I was her maid of honor and I was kind of like help getting, you know, getting things set up at the reception center and everything like that. And, you know, kind of coordinating with my mom and my dad's 70th birthday party uh, on the 23rd of September, you know, we kind of were like, okay, well, 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 we want it to be surprised. And it's like, okay, well, it's going to be 70s theme. So let's get some decorations. And nice. so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love it. It, it combines things that I know that I'm good at. So yeah. I'm excited to see where the rest of my future goes. So <laughs> Yeah, good luck on that. Really, well, good luck with you on yours. Yeah, it sounds like you. we both kind of have similar things. Yeah, <laughs> we have similar things. Yes, and um, I asked my friend if they have that um NC tour, the national um certificate for that, and she said yes, we have that. But I am still waiting, uh, for for the opening so that I also can learn. You know? Yeah. Yeah learn from somebody else, get the experience will always be beneficial. I love that. Mm. You know, getting firsthand experience from somebody who's deep in the business. Oh yeah. I love mm. it. <laughs> but all right. So <laughs> I, I guess we're finished with the uh, with yeah. uh, with with the uh, our cases that we um are presented today. Yeah. Uh, how can we help aside from, you know, or you are going to submit again also the Nope, and I am now going to go eat dinner. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Thank, th yes, of course. And it, it says on, when whenever we have a meeting, it says meeting summary with Zoom IQ on. So I still haven't you, figured that out yet. <laughs> all right, so I will ask my friend how to do that because there, there's an AI and they are capturing all our... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. I've got so, to dig into the settings. I'm wondering if there's something I'm, in the I'm settings. I'm so sorry because you are still, I mean, you are you are submitting our video. And at the same time, I think you are also submitting the, the PowerPoint or maybe the, the documentation of our um case. But I really wanted to help out too. Yeah, <laughs> you're good. Yeah, I've got, I just kind of figured I'm like, oh, I'm like, I did it last week. I'll do it this week just because I'll already be writing up two case studies i'm like i'll just do the documentation this week so yeah. if you want to do the documentation for next week and submit it yeah. you can that'd be cool whatever yeah. whatever you'd like i'm good with that but yeah i'll go ahead and just get everything finished and get it submitted so we're all good no thank you thank you and enjoy your dinner <laughs> and enjoy your rest of your day yes thank you so much steph all right have a great Bye. and a good weekend uh, coming up too. Yeah. All Happy right. weekend. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> All right. Have a All good right. day. Yeah, thank you. Have a You're... good night. All right. I'm gonna try. I'm ready for some food. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>